Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Language Corner, which is a relatively recent or new show that I have been recording for you. It's a series about uh, football vocabulary, and it's not only about football vocabulary. You may have noticed some of you are like, uh, I don't want to watch football. I don't understand football. Well, the language that appears in this series uh, is from uh, the context of people talking about football. However, it's applicable. You can use this language outside football. So it has a lot of potential. So without further ado, let's get started. There's another argument for Erdegaard. I really like Erdegaard. I think he's he's been better every time I've seen him play. Uh, there are still maybe little things that you have in terms of problems. I don't think you have the best back four. And I think it will be tested more when you play against better teams. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, all respect needs to be delivered because you've been playing amazing. And I thought when Aubameyang left, you would not have any chance of Champions League. And you almost proved me wrong there as well. So maybe it was the right decision. Right. To prove someone wrong. Marvin said that when Aubameyang left Arsenal, when he was kicked by Arteta, he thought that Arsenal stood almost no chance of making it to the Champions League. But he was almost proven wrong because Arsenal almost got there. Remember the last year, how they messed it up in the last match, in the last few matches? Well, they almost got into the Champions League, which is not what Marvin was predicting. We almost prove him wrong. So if you prove somebody wrong, it means that you show that someone said something wrong and you show that someone was incorrect about something. For example, let's talk about this video, okay? I think this video won't get 15 likes. I think it is unlikely for this video to get 15 likes. Can you guys prove me wrong? I would love to be proven wrong because obviously I would love this video to have a lot of likes. Can you guys prove me wrong? Thank you. All right, guys, uh, before we move on to the other games, um, we need to call, we need to give a mention to the Saliba song. <laughs> the the Buscuma song that they stole. The Saliba song. Saliba! I have an earworm. Saliba! I have an earworm. A worm in my ear? No, not really. To have an earworm is a is an interesting idiom, which means that you have a song or a melody from a song stuck in your head. You know, sometimes the melodies are so catchy, they, they are so um so well made that the more you listen, the more it kind of you you can kind of hear it in your head. It gets stuck there and then you cannot get it out. Sometimes it's a bit annoying as well, especially if the if the song or melody is a bit annoying, but it's just made in such a way that you can't get it out of your head. And we can say you have an earworm. So you sort of sing it to yourself in your head repeatedly. Have you guys ever had an earworm? Tell me, let me know. What was the song? Let me know in the comments. So I'm, and also playing the wrong players in the wrong positions. We've got two mid, two mid, one guy we don't know where he plays. Havertz, he's playing as a striker. We've got Mount playing left wing when he's a midfielder, yeah. and it might have worked for a couple of times last season, but ultimately that isn't going to work. We won the Champions League with Mount dropping deep. It might have worked for a couple of times last season, but now it doesn't work. So. We are looking at grammar here. Yes, it's grammar time. Are you all excited? I can see it on your face. Honestly, I can't see anything, but I'm just guessing that you guys like grammar. I certainly like grammar. So if you say that something might have happened, um, it means that it was possible in the past to happen. Right? It's, 
it's like it's not guaranteed that it actually happened. And Marvin was speaking about um, something to do with Chelsea, I believe, right? And he said it might have this strategy, this system, or this player playing in this position, it might have worked for a couple of times last season. But so he's kind of admitting that, yeah, it is possible that it worked. But often it's used like this when you want to make a contrast with the current situation. Um, you could say United might have been an amazingly run club a few years ago, but not anymore. I mean, just go and ask Gary Neville. He will tell you exactly the same. Okay. So um, I might have been a decent footballer back in the day, but um, those days are long gone. How about you? Can you make a sentence about yourself? Don't forget to use this might have and the verb with the ed at the end or what we call the past participle the third form of the verb if it's an irregular verb you need to know what the third form of that verb is so just to repeat can you make a sentence about yourself make a contrast i might have been um um i might have been hard working back in the day i might have studied hard when i was younger but i don't do that anymore Okay, right. Next. Okay. So I want to ask Jack and Carl. Did you guys see at least the highlights from the from the Chelsea game? Yeah. Did yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. So what did you think of that first Leeds goal, the Arson goal, the Mendy Mendy's howler? Yeah, how, yeah. How could I, that I, I love seeing goals like that. <laughs> how, what was he thinking? <laughs> Yeah. He does it all the time. He's usually quite reliable um, with stuff like that. He's pretty good with his feet. He's he probably up there as one of the best keepers in the league, you know. Um, He's probably up there with one of the best keepers in the league. So if you are up there with someone else, it means that you are kind of equal uh, to them in your ability or a particular skill. So you could say that this season um, Leeds are up there with the best teams in the Premier League. They are up there. They are playing at, at a really, really good level. They are playing some good football. So they are up there, not only in the table, but in terms of the, uh, in terms of the quality, let's say, uh, of their football. Uh, I'm going to ask you this. Could you name a footballer who is up there with the biggest legends of the last decades, such as Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? Who do you think is up there with these legends? Let me know in the comments. I know that Elland Road is a difficult place to go to, or at least it used to be, because you know it's, people compared it to um, to. Um, Anfield in terms of the atmosphere people in in the early years of the Premier League used to say it's you know the, the, one of the most difficult stadiums to go to uh, people in the early years of the Premier League used to say it was one of the most difficult stadiums to go to so we are talking about the Allen Road which is the Leeds Stadium and if something used to be true it means in the past this was the case. People thought in the past that this was a difficult place to play, difficult stadium to go to for any team. Yeah. But if you if you use this phrase used to plus infinitive, it means that it's no longer true. So in a way, it's kind of similar to that phrase might have been. Yeah. If you use it in that way. So um this is a very, very useful phrase. Don't forget, used to plus infinitive, okay? So, uh, for example, I could say, I used to play football, but I don't anymore. So, if you used to do something, it means you did this regularly in the past. This is something you did, but you no longer do it. It's often used to make a contrast, okay? Tottenham used to be shit, but now, unfortunately, I have to admit they are an okay team they are quite decent they are quite solid and they have a good manager they are not a bad team let's be honest 
So what did you used to do that you don't do anymore? Let me know in the comments. So Corne and Samaka and yeah. Samaka. someone else, but mainly Corne, Corne and Samaka, who didn't start um, against us, were quality. Corne looked so dangerous coming in, whipping the ball in, um, yeah. and Samaka scored a first, scored a great goal, scored a header, and then he was playing with confidence yeah. and looked really dangerous. Corne looked so dangerous coming in, whipping the ball in. What does it mean to whip the ball in? Obviously, this is a verb to whip the ball in. So you do something with the football, right? Now, what does it exactly mean? Well, Corne is a winger and a winger. And what he does is that he crosses the ball in. And if you whip it in, you kind of do it rapidly. So this is a whip. And often this verb is used when you do something kind of quickly, you know? So you whip the ball in like a whip. You, you, you cross the ball quick, you cross the ball quickly into the box. Um, and it's like a whip. Okay. So over to you. Do you know a footballer? who likes to whip the ball in a lot? Um, a winger or perhaps a wing back? Let me know in the comments. I've heard some West Ham fans uh, saying what Moyes out and can you guess who they were naming as his replacement? <laughs> Allardyce. The, probably the same person that any club that is without a manager names as their replacement at the moment. <laughs> it, it's Potter or Pochettino, it's Po Po. <laughs> Anyone who, whose name starts with PO, basically. <laughs> I think they need to tamper their expectations because I think that, like, for example, Graham Potter, when he does decide, if he does, he might stay with Brighton, um, he can probably get a bigger job than West Ham. So to tamper your expectations is a really interesting phrase that uh, Marvin used. He was talking about Graham Potter, the Brighton manager, and he was basically implying that Graham Potter can get a bigger club, a bigger job. He can get a bigger job than West Ham. West Ham is not good enough for him. So the West Ham fans should temper or lower their expectations. So they, they are hoping, they are expecting to get maybe Graham Potter if, if David Moyes is fired. But Marvin is like, hold your horses. It's not happening. You should temper your expectations because Graham Potter... Graham Potter can do much better than West Ham, okay? So to temper your expectations means to lower or modify your expectations. What do you think Arsenal fans should do? Now, they have started the season really well, right? Look where they are in the table at the top. But maybe their opponents were not the strongest. Yeah, they, ha they have had quite an easy run-in. Do you think the Arsenal fans should temper their expectations? Let me know in the comments. Big Willy Saliba would be my, uh, my hero of the week. I think that just him getting that goal and just kind of, I, f I feel like that's really helped him settle a lot into that squad. Um, he showed... Like a lot of metal and like maturity beyond these years. He's only 21. <laughs> Saliba. No, don't worry. I'm not going to sing this song for the rest of the video. No. But I'm talking about Saliba here because Carl said that um, basically he has shown maturity. Maturity is the quality of behaving mentally and emotionally like an adult. And uh, Saliba showed that he is capable uh, of playing at this level, at the Premier League level. And um, I think that's, that's, that's brilliant, right? That's brilliant. That's great for Arsenal. Now, I want to ask you a question about Declan Rice, the, the new West Ham United skipper, the new West Ham United captain. He took the armband from uh, the retiring Mark Noble. And I want to ask you, do you think that Declan Rice has shown enough maturity to deserve the, the armband? What do you think? Well, let me know in the comments. And that's all from me for today. I would like to remind you that the main show 
is always broadcast live on Monday at 8 p.m. Central European time. Please come because if you take part in that show live, you will be able to ask us questions in the comments, which is a fantastic, a phenomenal opportunity, isn't it? It absolutely is. Guys, thank you very much for watching The Language Corner. I hope you liked this one. I'm sorry that I have recorded it so late, but better late than never. Don't forget to give this video a like to help the channel out and um, feel free to answer some of those questions I've asked you in the comments. Okay, guys, that's it. That's all from me. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye.